we were we will power on here on the 415ers podcast uh brought to you by the odyssey sports podcast network three times a week with 95 7 the game evan Giddings, mark grandy please feel free to download rate and subscribe all right let's get to uh some 49ers content mark there was you know obviously a lot of great storylines that came out of this week we talked about the emergence and the mainstay of christian mccaffrey brandon Ayuk, and brock purdy well brock purdy this week as some degenerates may or may not have been paying attention to <laughs> have had his offensive rookie of the year odds soar all the way up to, I believe Mark third uh, when it comes or third favorite, I should say in the offensive rookie of the year award uh, betting market. I, I saw plus 600 yesterday. Mark was saying it's down to plus 500. So people are clearly hopping on the Brock Purdy train. He still trails uh, the two, Others, which are Kenneth Walker, the third running back for the Seattle Seahawks, as well as Garrett Wilson, the wide receiver for the New York Jets. Mark, does Brock Purdy deserve to win Offensive Rookie of the Year? I feel like that's a loaded question, Evan. I don't know. Uh, to your point, the odds are going crazy. The highest I see, the tallest odds are on FanDuel, plus 500. I see plus 350 on Caesars. 450 oh on bet MGM. So there's a lot of money coming in on Brock Purdy. Uh, I guess you can understand why, because he's had an incredible month. Um, but I think that's where this conversation ends for me, Evan. Unfortunately, I, I think you need to play at least double digit games to be considered for these kinds of individual full season awards. Um, Brock Purdy has been phenomenal. He's been a godsend for the 49ers. There's no doubt about that. I am not debating that. Uh, but the fact that he's only played in five games, I guess he, he's played in a couple more in, in mop-up duty at, at certain points. Really meaningful snaps in five games, only started four games. I think for me, just kind of by default, Evan, that takes him out of the running for this Offensive Rookie of the Year award. He's going to get votes, certainly, because he's leading the hottest team in football right now. And he probably deserves some votes, but I would probably defer to a full season from, you know, Kenneth Walker, a full season from Garrett Wilson, a relatively full season from Chris Olave, though he's he's fallen off a little bit recently. Uh, I'm not so sure that Brock Purdy has been so incredibly transcendent over a month's span that that pushes him over uh, these guys who have been pretty good for an entire season in their rookie year. I, I think I think that's kind of where I'm at. I'm largely with you, and I'm going to name the last eight winners just to kind of put into perspective the sort of names that Brock Purdy would be with. Uh, 2021, Jamar Chase. It's pretty good. <laughs> 2020, Justin Herbert. Also pretty good. 2019, Kyler Murray. Uh, jury's out. 2018, <laughs> Saquon Barley. He is he is good. 2017, Alvin Kamara, and 2016, Dak Prescott. Uh, 2015, Todd Gurley. 2014, Odell Beckham Jr. Those would be the names that Brock Purdy would have his own etched in with. And look, I understand Garrett Wilson is going to win this award. Kenneth Walker III is probably going to come in second with what he's done in Seattle, even though he's also missed some games. I think Garrett, well, Garrett Wilson's missed some games too, but they have played double-digit games. They've played close to 14 games or will have by the end of this season. But when it comes down to the Offensive Rookie of the Year, to me, when I see all those names, sure, I see pro bowlers, I see all pros, but I see guys that provide immediate value to their franchise, to their club, and a form of legitimacy and stability that other players around the roster do not add. That, to me, screams Brock Purdy more than the other two guys ahead of him. I know he doesn't have the sample size at this point with games played, but when I think of a player that is providing the most value right now and maybe even has stabilized a team's postseason potential Super Bowl chances... Brock Purdy absolutely deserves to be in the conversation. And I believe he may not come in first place, but he should get some first place votes. Because by the end of the season, if you're looking at a, a 6-0 record, 
you know, 10 plus touchdowns. The numbers are what they are. But you're talking about a San Francisco team that in the storyline of the season was on its way out. When Trey Lance got hurt, Jimmy Garoppolo steps in. When Jimmy Garoppolo gets hurt, San Francisco's postseason chances of success take a hit. Brock Purdy not only alleviates those issues, but elevates the 49ers' chances to go deep into the postseason, as we have talked about over the course of this podcast the last couple of weeks. In my opinion, that means that Brock Purdy, though his name is not as great as those last eight winners that we talked about, the qualities of an AP Offensive Rookie of the Year list, and in a lot of cases, demand that Brock Purdy should be in the same conversation. I hear you, and I understand what you're saying. I, I just think the body of work uh, isn't quite enough. Now, let's say say this was a regular season and postseason award, which, of course, it isn't. But say it was, and voters took both into account. As, as it stands right now, they only are basing their vote off of what they saw in the regular season. If Brock Purdy has a, a pretty good six-game run here at the end of the regular season, leads his team to a win in all six, uh, five starts, and then you know one in relief of Jimmy Garoppolo, where he played three plus quarters and led his team to all the points that they scored on offense. Uh, and then he he played three good postseason games, maybe four good postseason games, whatever the number is. I think then that would be enough to convince me and to earn my vote. But I think the way it's going right now it would be unfair to the guys that that you mentioned, Kenneth Walker, the running back uh, from Seattle, Garrett Wilson, the wide receiver uh, from the Jets. Um, I will say, I think it's convenient that you ended at 2014, because if you go back to the 2013 Offensive Rookie of the Year, you're left with Eddie Lacy, who doesn't quite fit the bill with some of the more recent winners. Uh, Eddie Lacy, the, the Packers running back from back in the day, obviously had a good rookie year, but but kind of fell off after that. Um, but I I understand what you're saying. I, I'm, I'm just, I think it's, for me, it's less about what Brock Purdy has done because what he has done is incredible. It's more so that I would feel like I wasn't being fair to what Kenneth Walker or Garrett Wilson accomplished if I didn't vote for one of those two guys because they, relatively speaking, at least compared to Brock Purdy, uh, did it for longer. Now, maybe that's not fair to Brock Purdy either because it's not like it was his fault that he didn't play earlier. It's just the way things go when you're a seventh-round rookie quarterback. You need the opportunity. You're, you're Even if you're incredible in camp, you're not going to win the starting job as a seventh-round rookie quarterback. So it's not against Brock Purdy. I think it's more so just how I would feel if I didn't vote for one of those other two guys who have been doing it all year. Yeah, that's true. I just think it's interesting also, like the MVP award, as we talked about, is basically a quarterback award. Uh, yeah. And the rookie of the year is interesting, like one of the few awards where you will see a lot of position players, as we listed, be able to capture the award and it won't matter what position they play. Um, also, the reason I didn't bring Eddie Lacy into it was because I did I did want to stack up Brock Purdy's name with the rest of those big boys and say, hey, this is this is what it could be. What about uh, uh, Sam Bradford back in 2010 winning the offensive rookie of the year? Uh, that one actually didn't surprise me too much at the time, <laughs> but the amount of money that he got paid did and you know basically wrecked the entire rookie quarterback contract system. Regardless, let's move on to an award that I do think demands some examination and has i think some more legitimacy to it mark which is kyle shanahan deserving mm. to win coach of the year have you come around to him being your number one candidate at this point i think so i i think this award is his and if you're one who needs to look at the the vegas odds and in, in how they are handicapping this right now uh he's second behind nick sirianni of the eagles uh, Sirianni, a, a slight favorite, Shanahan at, at plus 200, which means if, if you were to bet 100 bucks, you would win 200. So two to one odds for Shanahan right now. But those odds are getting slimmer by the day. He's closing on Nick Sirianni, at least according to Vegas. Um, I almost think, Evan, and, and I don't know if you agree with me or not, that regardless of what happens in week 18, if the Niners are the one seed, 
or the two seed. Maybe if they fall to the three seed, that changes things. But if they're the one or the two, they don't need to pass Philadelphia. If they just beat the Cardinals in week 18, Evan, uh, and they finish on an 11 game win streak with half of those wins basically coming with a seventh round rookie quarterback, and you're the hottest team in football going into the postseason, and you have as good of a chance as any to win the Super Bowl, how do you not give it to the guy who is coaching up that seventh round rookie quarterback? I, I just, there will be votes for both of those guys, for Sirianni and Shanahan, and, and some others sprinkled in as well. But how can you not vote for Kyle Shanahan, who is doing what he's doing, leading this team to one of their best regular seasons in recent memory with a seventh round rookie quarterback? And you talk a lot about, you know, coaching. You you can see it come through in the postseason. The coaching also comes through when you're being led by a rookie quarterback. And Shanahan is coaching his ass off right now. I don't see how you couldn't give it to him. Well, I'll tell you why, Mark. Now, uh-oh. I <laughs> I just noticed this trend as we were kind of going through the list. We're going through rookies of the years. We're going through head coaches of the year. I did not realize that three of the last five head coaches to be bestowed this award were in their first season with their team. And what that tells to me, and you kind of enlighten me, Mark, is the fact that this award generally goes to a franchise or to a, to a team that has relatively low expectations. Yep. Now, if you want to make the argument that the Niners were not expected to be in this position, I'll certainly grant you that. And a lot of it is un- unfortunate due to injury. But the 49ers were expected to compete for the NFC West. They were expected to be a postseason team. I do not know if you could say the same as definitively, just because of the division they play in, as the Philadelphia Eagles. Last year, the Cowboys absolutely dominated that division. The Eagles snuck in as a nine-win team. And this year, they have completely ran away with things. Well, I guess not to the point that they could lose this weekend and fall to the five seed. But you know what I'm saying? Like They already have 13 wins on their ledger. They're a team that is led by a second-year head coach, so a pretty young one. They have a young, upstart quarterback that has taken the next step in his career in Jalen Hurts. They have made great moves in the offseason, you know, maybe spearheaded by the A.J. Brown deal. Uh, They have a great team around for Sirianni to to coach up. And it just, the award to me is one that, yes, Kyle Shanahan has, with now his third starting quarterback, gotten his team better. But to me, where Kyle Shanahan's marquee move lies is in kind of the executive chair, which would be trading for Christian McCaffrey. I don't know if I can give him that as head coach. Now, he has gotten the most out of his offense since acquiring Christian McCaffrey. They haven't lost a game when he starts. But to me, it's a slight edge still to Sirianni. I think that's why the betting market would reflect that. And I expect at the end of the year, Sirianni will be head coach of the year. It might be one and one A. It might be one and two. But I think, unfortunately, Kyle Shanahan falls short. You're absolutely right that Coach of the Year has become an expectations award. Generally, it goes to the team that wasn't expected to do much at the start of the year and that they exceeded expectations. Essentially, uh, it's uh, who, which team uh, you know, won the most games above their expected win total. That's essentially what this award is. And through what, 14 weeks, it was the Philadelphia Eagles because they had only lost one game all yeah. year. Uh, but they've lost two in a row now. And I know part of that is because of an injury to their quarterback, but Sirianni's biggest competition for coach of the year, guess what, is a guy who lost not one, but two starting quarterbacks and hasn't missed a beat. They've won nine straight games now. They are a win away against a a Cardinals team who's already waving the white flag on 2023 uh, from winning 10 in a row, six of which with a backup, a rookie seventh round quarterback. I mean, this is unprecedented things that the Niners are doing. And I'm not saying Kyle Shanahan deserves all of the credit for these wins. I mean, D'Amico Ryans deserves a ton of credit. Christian McCaffrey deserves a ton of credit. Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, the list goes on. But Brock Purdy does not do this without great leadership from his head coach. Um, And I think Kyle Shanahan is deserving of that. And I, I, I guess 
there's a couple of questions to sort through. One, would I vote for Kyle Shanahan as coach of the year? Yes, I would. Would I predict that he's going to win it? I'm not so sure because like we're talking about, it is an expectations award. And I'm not so sure if there are enough voters nationwide, Evan, who are, I don't know, heady enough to realize or not to realize, but to internalize that the 49ers expectations changed midseason. You cannot think about the Niners in the preseason and vote based on that. You have to think about the 49ers. What you thought the second that Jimmy Garoppolo left the game? What did you think in that moment? You thought the season was over, and it's not over. They have a chance to win the Super Bowl, and that is why Kyle Shanahan deserves Coach of the Year. I, I see what you're saying, and I do think that there will be some recency bias to his side, but I'm just looking at it from the entire picture and the entire body of work. Philly has faltered in their last few games, the last couple of games. If they lose this week, they fall to the five or, you know, San Francisco gets the one. I, I honestly do think that whoever gets the one seed at this point in the NFC is going to have the head coach of the year. If you tell me Kyle Shanahan deserves it, I hear you. If you tell me Nick Sirianni deserves it, I believe you. I guess I will just, I would pick Sirianni at this point and then next week reserve the right to switch that pick to Kyle Shanahan. That's how close of a race I think mm. it is. Boo, pick one. Well, I told you I'm picking Sirianni right now. <laughs> well, yeah, you reserve the right to change it, though. That's kind of unfair. But that's how close the race is. Like, I, we're talking about two potential 13-win <laughs> teams here. We're talking about two potential Super Bowl contenders. We're talking about two teams that have been pegged from about, I would say, week eight as being the NFC Conference title matchup. Like, those are the two teams. So, I mean, I, I sure I'm splitting hairs here, but Sirianni is my pick. No love for Brian Dable from Evan, huh? He's done all right. What about uh, what about Peterson down in Jacksonville? What if they beat the Titans and win their division in his first year after they were the biggest dumpster fire in the league last year? I would throw I would throw Brandon Staley in his face. The Los Angeles Chargers. <laughs> What about no, Dan I, Campbell? What if they honestly, beat the Packers and make the playoffs? Let's be honest. I mean, it's got it's Sean McDermott or Andy Reid. Like those are the two best coaches in football, in my opinion. Uh,